Hi, she was seven. Happy New Year. Toast, toast, toast. Okay, so I'm going to cover a bunch of topics in one video because I've had a lot of requests and I need to just go through them quick because some of them don't need a whole video, okay? So the first request I got is um, dating in this time, you have to actually verify that a man is single because they do lie about their status a single married or taken or in a relationship so you do need to verify that ladies do your research get uh, get him to invite you to your to his house make sure you have uh, make, sh make sure you're able to call him at certain times of the night da -da 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 -da. don't let his excuses uh, talk you out of it make sure that you can verify that he is 100% single ladies because a lot of men will lie to you okay okay now that that's out of the way Second uh, thing to discuss is if you are not over your ex and you want to keep him chasing you while you're with a new guy just to make him jealous and so that he'll always be there. Okay, um, once you've let it be known that you're having sex with another man, that ex is not going to really be chasing you that, chasing you that much um, because once a man knows that, you've, that you're sleeping with another man, it's pretty much over in their mind. So that's that's like done uh, if you can convince him that you're not sleeping with him and that you're just getting to know this person then he still might hang on if you keep communication open up with him that's fine but once you like move on sexually it's kind of hard to go backwards with in a man's mind because they're really possessive okay so moving on um, next one is another another girl asked me how do you date as a virgin in in their 20s uh, how should you go about dating okay um, well I don't know if you live in America but in America it's very rare to be a virgin and date in these days it's, it's a very sexualized country women are more free um, and like when I was younger I actually dated an Indian guy from India and he had a girlfriend I didn't know about it at the time I was young y'all but he would go out and sleep with random women and and uh, so his girl, girlfriend could maintain her virginity and I don't know if she knew he would send her home like um y'all he would send her home like at a certain time and he would stay after at the bar the club or wherever he was and then he would pick up other women that were you know doing it so if you're a girlfriend and you're dating a guy he's probably getting it from somewhere if not you um because that's what guys do. They want to explore. They want to have a lot of sex before they settle down and get married to one chick. Okay? That's just men in general. So if I were you, I wouldn't take it personally. If you find out your man's sleeping with somebody else, cheating. Doesn't mean that they love that girl if they just want to have sex. Okay? This is how most men are. Um, and, you know... I don't know if they'll continue to do it after marriage. I'm not sure. But I do see a lot of these guys online who are in, you know, certain cultures that are not very sexual, always looking for sex. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, but, you know, if you meet the right type of guy with the same moral values as you, who's not out looking for that, who's probably not super attractive, um, at a young age who are who is able to go out and just get sex or whatever or pay for it because a lot of will hire a prostitute I mean, let's let's face it. So um, I would just Not take it personal and hopefully after marriage she will take that seriously. Okay um, next question I had was can you um, Tell me about you know when you get when you get married you know how how do things change in the relationship everything changes it's a power it's a power thing okay I'm gonna tell y'all because a lot of women don't understand this after you get married the power shifts the power will shift especially if you work ladies if you work the power shifts to you men if your woman don't work the power shifts to you so who's ever running the household making the money making the most money they are the one that lead the household you know a lot of times the woman will lead what goes on in the house but she's not going to be making no giant decisions make it you know money making decisions um because you know she just earned 
the money that comes into the house mostly okay so if it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a power play it becomes a competition if y'all are close to the same age and are in a career it becomes competition then uh, see who can get the most bonuses see who can get the the most promotions see who can make uh you know see who can get you know the most money at their job it becomes a competition until one of until the woman gets pregnant and when the woman gets pregnant she starts if she's not into her pregnancy and more into her career she starts resenting that man you know he starts resenting her because he's she can't bring in the money like she used to because she has to take off work she has to stay home with the baby for like six weeks and unless she doesn't get you know um the pay to you know maternity pay she's taken off for, for sickness she's taking off for you know a doctor's appointments and she might just want to stay home and not go back to work after the baby for maybe a year or two and so a lot of men start to resent their woman because first of all they start changing their looks they start changing everything um, you know the way they wear their hair some might chop it off so the the power shifts and then when the baby comes the baby gets all the attention the man gets a little attention he feels like an outcast in his own house the power changes during a marriage and you will get tested a lot during the first few years of your marriage they say this the first seven years of a marriage is the hardest if you can get past the first seven years it's no problem but the first seven years are the absolute hardest and you have to get through them. Uh, so you know everything changes after marriage um, women become more dominant because they feel like you know what they're not they don't have to act anymore they don't have to play this role now they can like let the real them out and sort of you know uh, be who they are and not have to pretend anymore and the husband gets to meet this woman for the first time <laughs> meet married woman okay uh, but the good thing about it is they become closer they become more comfortable with each other they become more like family they depend on each other for more than monetary reasons um, their kids start to look at them as you know something special and they start to feel that so it's, it's it's a beautiful thing as well but I'm telling you it's not like boyfriend and girlfriend mm -mm. so this is why I always say it's very important if you go into a marriage to know exactly what you want to have it planned out to know exactly what steps you're gonna take if this person loses their job or if they don't want to go back to work after their baby or this this and that y'all need to have that discussion before y'all even discuss marriage okay because this is where a lot of people get divorced at i already told my husband before we got married i said like, you know what i'm not going back to work i'm not working no 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 okay and he knew that before he married me so it was all good uh, okay um so let's see another uh oh somebody wanted to see my perfumes that i wear okay um right now i'm wearing tom ford I don't pop Molly I pop Tom Ford <laughs> this is a dark seductive smell like this is alluring this is like this is Black Orchid by Tom Ford this yes this is what you wear at night and like a day fragrance a nice little feminine day fragrance is this Viva La Juicy by Juicy Couture that I wear it's really feminine it's not too fruity it smells womanly and it but it smells sweet and it's just a really nice subtle fragrance that you can wear to work and not be overpowering um, you can wear this to lunch you can wear this to Sunday brunch but when you go on a date when you go on a happy hour you need to get this and spray it on and when you walk by that man's gonna be like what, is, what was that this is like Mm. y'all need to go smell this if y'all have it anyway uh, those are the perfumes that I'm wearing and like when I go to bed at night or when I'm just lounging around the house but I still want to have the fragrance on but not waste my perfume I wear wrapped in comfort by Bath and Body Works y'all and it smells like incense oranges just like uh, spices it doesn't smell like um, 
it's it's fruity spices incense it smells like like you've been meditating or something you know it's, it's like but also warm like you're sitting by a fire but this is like seasonal so like a fall winter fragrance this smells like warmth and um another thing that i like to wear is this uh butterfly flower by bath and body works i have the body spray to this as well but it's in my bathroom this with this kind of smells like a martin jacob daisy uh it's like a flowery floral sweet spring scent so this is what i would wear in the spring okay so those are like my smells my go-to smells that i really like uh, when I like when I'm just going to bed or when I just get out the shower and I don't want to waste my bath and body works product I have this honey vanilla body spray that I just spray on like and just go hop into bed because you know I like to have some type of fragrance when I go to sleep um, and plus it's cheap it was like a dollar y'all I got that from the Dollar Tree but yeah it's pretty good also um, yeah that's what I wear also I like let's see, if I have another question I can answer real quick um, mm, 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 mm. hmm I think that was pretty much it um, Valentine's Day is coming up what should you do how do you get through a Valentine's date <laughs> uh, you start early because women always do this. They wait till the last minute thinking some man's gonna come rescue them and ask them to be their Valentine. Make your Valentine's Day plans early. I have already made my, I already told my husband, look, we're going out Valentine's Day, this date, we're going on a double date with my best friend, her husband, this is where we're going. I've already ordered my outfit, they're on the way. I've already ordered them, my shoes. I've already picked out my outfit. What are you, like we're planning now because this is what you have to do when you're married and have kids and busy you got to plan like a month ahead so ladies if you're after a busy man a business oriented man start planning your valentine's day now ask him what he wants to do don't let him surprise you man don't think that far in advance you got to take the initiative and say you know what what are we going to do for valentine's day this year how about let's do this let's do that um, and he'll be like okay that sounds good and ask him like, do you want to make the plans or the reservations? Do you want me to call him in and book it? Da, da, da. Make sure that he knows that you're um, involved in this. Because if you ask men to do this kind of stuff, they might forget. They might forget, on you know, to make the reservation. And y'all know stuff is booked on Valentine's Day. So you need to take the power in your own hands on this one, ladies. And all he has to do is basically just show up. And if he's already put efforts and plans and stuff together and marked it on his calendar he's going to be looking forward to it as well okay and he's going to be able to prepare for it so there'll be no excuse like he's going to know he has to get you a gift he's going to know he has to pay for dinner he's going to know he has to take you somewhere after dinner he's going to know all this so he's going to start watching his budget he's going to start making plans he's going to start thinking about you know what he needs to do and book book your valentine's day a month in advance it's wise and you're not left lonely and sad because most guys don't really value Valentine's Day. Women do, okay? So, if you're not in a new relationship, start talking about Valentine's Day. Anyway, if you're just dating someone, say, let's make a date for Valentine's Day. I think it would be really cool to have a date on Valentine's Day. That way, you know, blah, blah, make up something. I don't know. But just say, you know, um, let's go out on Valentine's Day. I think it would be... Um, just cool to be out with a bunch of other couples that have been together for years just to you know look at the difference and da, 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 make up some stuff but get your valentine's day request in early ladies otherwise you're not gonna have you're gonna be like the last minute and crying and sad nobody loves me anti-valentine's day if you don't have a man make it with a friend go out with a best friend go out um get do a spa day valentine's day you know if you don't have a best friend take your kids somewhere for valentine's day but make your plans early book them early because everything's booked up and if you're busy that day you don't have time to think about how single how sad you are how messed up your love life is and how your man forgot and how your man is not the best man in the world well if you want your life to go right 
you got to put your stuff in order ahead of time so that you can enjoy the effects of your the cause that you have created you know you gotta say oh this is the best valentine's day ever i'm so glad i planned it a month ahead everything is perfect you know so y'all start thinking about that okay i'll see y'all later bye happy new year